And here we are at Cedar Key Museum State Park, and it's just what it sounds like. There are two buildings on the grounds here, in addition to some nature trails. One of the buildings is the museum, and the other is a restored house called the Whitman House. It was built in the 1880s, and it was purchased in the 1920s by a guy named Whitman, and it has been restored to its original state for the 20s and 30s style of living. So we're going to go inside and explore and enjoy some air conditioning because it is hot and there are copious amounts of bugs out here. Oh my god. So, so yeah, so just uh, <clears throat> maybe like a little bit about the, the okay. museum and its history. And the museum um, depicts the history of Cedar Key, and it's in chronological order when you start on that side and you come around. It's chronological order tells you about the history of Cedar Key, the involvement in the Civil War, and um, those sort of things that were around. There's even the story of Rosewood is in there, if you'd like to read that. Uh, the museum was built to house many of the artifacts that the man who lived in that house, St. Clair Whitman, collected. Now he collected them, you know, all through his life. He came here when he was about 12. Um, his mother died and him and his father moved down here. They lived up north and his father thought he wanted to live in Key West because that's the only place he could think of that would be warm. Mm -hmm. But they ended up settling here and uh, they were here about a couple of years and then they took a little boat trip with a friend they, that his dad had met on the beach. It was a little sailing combination, sailing paddle boat, and they paddled down to Key West and back and it took them six months. But in 1880, you can imagine just how many shells were on the shore when they would park it, you know, camp at night. And so that's when he first started loving shells. And he had, at one time, he had the largest Florida shell collection in the world. And he's, the house that is there was built in 1900, but it wasn't built by him. <clears throat> I think it was built by somebody, Hale, but it was built on top of an Indian midden. And St. Clair Whitman bought it in 1920. So Whitman was the founder of Cedar Key? No, it's really funny. He wasn't even the mayor, but he was interested in preserving the history of Cedar Key. And so he was very instrumental in that. And his house, like I said, was the first, was, it was the first museum. People, the owners of the hotels would call him and say, I've got some people here want to come see your stuff. And he would invite them over four at a time and at that time he had most of his stuff in the cigar boxes and he would get them out and start explaining everything. So, so we'll get to see some of the shells mm -hmm. as well when we go oh, to yeah, the Oh yeah, there house. are shells and he, there okay, are wonderful. three or four uh, things of shells here and there are lots more shells over okay. there. And he also collected, he's got like an alligator skull and okay. some other stuff like that that's native so, to Florida. So I guess my question then, so what, what made him kind of like a famous skull well, like I said, because, because of he did the, shell the first, collection? well, and as you'll see, all of the Indian heads and all okay. of the other kind okay. of artifacts too. Okay. The house was built on a, uh, a Indian midden, so mm -hmm. it's only my theory that yeah. that's how he found a lot of the the uh, artifacts that yeah. he did right there. Yeah. They were probably right there. Okay. But and then he had all the beaches that you know people don't go. Weren't, weren't here yes, then, weren't yes. doing that then. And so he also designed um, a lot of the machinery for the sawmills. Oh, okay. And so he was like an engineer. He, yes, he was an engineer. Okay. And he designed the, uh, the um, equipment at the fiber mill. Okay, so, okay. And he ended up working in the whatever the wet okay. side of the fiber mill okay. was until he retired. Okay. And then he retired to start working on his museum. 
Okay. So he, he just loved the area so much and it had just collected all of this mm -hmm. kind of local uh, artifacts and stuff mm -hmm. in the area and decided to just share his collection with everyone. That's right. And people were okay. really, people were really um, impressed with it. Mm -hmm. And over here you'll see there's an uh, exhibit of mm -hmm. the National Geographic came okay. down to interview him and okay. take pictures okay. of his stuff. Now I was also reading on a brochure that Cedar Key also provides 95% of the nation with clams, that this is where the majority of um, clams are farm raised. Mm -hmm. Now, was he involved in any of that as well? No. Um, like, I was thinking maybe he engineered some of the, the, the techniques or the traps or... No, uh -uh, he mm -hmm. wasn't involved in that. Okay. At, at, the, in, at the height of uh, Cedar Key in the 1860s, mm -hmm. the, there were the pens, the sawmills yes they made the slats for the pencils okay they, uh, right apparently that the little island right off the coast mm -hmm. here that used to be where a pencil factory was right, right? a scene okay. okay and then there was um i just saw on the map i thought there were two sawmills mm -hmm. on asina odi okay there was the largest one eagle was on the main mm -hmm. the main part what we call cedar key now which okay. is way key okay and so that was on there. They made the slats. They didn't make the pencils. They made the slats and they shipped them to New York. So and why do it on a little island and not on the mainland, even though Cedar Key is an island? Because, because it seems like it would be more expensive. That's where the cedar was. That's where the cedar trees really? were. Yes. On that island? The, uh -huh, red cedar is what they used and they wow. pretty much took it all down. Wow. And so red cedar and also at that time ships had about a 15 foot draft mm -hmm. and Asina Odi out there was considered a deep port okay and so um, so that's why it became Cedar Key became important at because of the port mm -hmm. and like I said at the mm -hmm. height there were two ships a week going to Cuba mm -hmm. at, you know at the height of Cedar Keys and mm -hmm. then they and Funny you mentioned that we were just, we we just visited Cuba. Really? Yeah, about maybe uh, three four months ago. We uh, were on one of the last cruises before they they implemented okay. the travel ban again. Again. Yeah. yeah. That is really interesting. So in a way too, like I guess back then they just used up all of the the natural resources exactly. and they never replanted to to keep them. And so once the trees were gone, the pencils were gone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And I just find it interesting that there was a pencil factory in Florida yeah. on an island. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just funny. Well, then after they did that, then they were into oystering and fishing. Okay, sure. Until they just about fished, oystered out the beds. Sure, sure. You know, it was the same sure. thing. They didn't know about conservation and redoing. Then, um, and fishing was still, fishing was still a big part of how most of the people in Cedar Key made their living. But when they instituted the uh, extruder nets, the, you know, when they had to have the extruder holes in their nets, well, then that pretty much ended the fishing here. Mm -hmm. So they, the fishermen and oystermen were retrained. I think University of Florida had a lot to do with that, okay. but I'm not sure about oh, okay. all the details, but they were retrained to, um, to harvest the clams and to raise the clams. Okay. And so that's what they do. And one of the reasons that the clams do well here is because the water is really pure. You know, the oysters filter, the clams filter, because nobody wants to eat clams that have come out of, say, uh, the, Gulf, <laughs> the Gulf Stream on the yes, East Coast, of you, course. you know? So the, the water here is very pure and uh, I guess that's it. The water here is really good. Yeah, yeah. It's a good okay. climate. So, so basically, then the overall, uh, I guess, up to now, then Cedar Key is pretty much most of its income comes, I guess, through tourism and through the clams. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is a seasonal town, right? It like is. during the summer, like right now, it's a lot slower. But then during like the cooler months, that's when like the snowbirds come. That's right. Come when the down, snowbirds right? come yeah. is in the winter. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And what was your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. We, we really appreciate, appreciate that. It. And thank you for letting us uh, <laughs> hear some of the history. And thanks for um, 
uh, letting us interview you. Well, if you come yeah. up with any more questions, just come ask. Yeah, we will. Like yeah, I we're going to take, I don't, a, take I, a walk around now. I don't know it. I got a book. Out. Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Well, thank you. All righty. <laughs> Behind me is the Whitman House. This is where St. Clair Whitman lived, and uh, the house has been restored to its original state in the 1920s and 30s when he was living here. So let's go check this place out. Geographic magazine itself that was <laughs> oh you're filming hey yeah this is the National Geographic magazine from 1955 which featured um, this museum and this collection because this was the original museum right here this is where Whitman himself would bring people in four people at a time and show them all this cool stuff I'm going to pick this up so you can see it a little bit better check that out that second headline with the arrows pointing towards it, Cruising Florida's Western Waterways. Super cool. You see all those uh, palmetto brushes and brooms. These beautiful shells everywhere, arrowheads.
say hi. If you like us, please subscribe. And if you don't, our little fluffy dog will attack you. 